guys, Nick here with the reptile department of Josh's Frogs again. Today I am going to be talking about one of the larger and more colorful of the species that we keep here, the keelbelly lizards. We call them Prasinas here because that's their scientific name. Pretty much these guys are kind of a smaller version of most tree monitors, actually. This enclosure right here is an 18-18-24. You can keep a standard breeding pair in these. We keep our breeding pairs in these ones. Singles will be better, so if you have more space, you can obviously do that. These are what we keep the babies in right now. This is a 12 by 12 by 24 polidarium style. We just didn't fill it up with water. Gives them a little extra height. These guys are arboreal. They absolutely love spending time in the trees, as you can see by this guy right here. He's just chilling, basking out here. They like a 90 degree hot spot, which we use these halogen lamps for. It really helps get the heat right where they need it to be. And because of how high and how vertically oriented it is, they can bask at various levels. So that's always good for them. They absolutely love it. These are a diurnal species, meaning they're out during most of the parts of the day. That's why they're mostly active during the day and basking. You'll see them here. So they need UVB. Usually just standard 5.0 bulbs for the UVB. We like to keep them in these exoterra hoods just because that covers up the back or front portion depending on where you're putting it and covers it up and gives it more humidity. These guys love humidity. They like a humidity level at about 60 to 80 percent. Usually can be achieved with misting once or twice a day just depending on your ambient humidity at home. So some places that like it drier they're going to be missing it two to three times a day even especially here in our Michigan winters. But then other places like Florida and places that are just naturally humid, you might get away with once a day, if at all. And always a good look is to tell by the substrate. If you can see moisture in the substrate, then you're doing a good job. These guys are very active. They can be kept in small groups when they're younger. Obviously separate them out when they're older. And if you're going to keep them, you can only keep them in breeding pairs. You cannot keep two males together for obvious reasons. You can only put females to females occasionally if they have been raised together or a male-female pair. Only do that if you're planning on having babies. These guys are egg gluers. If you do decide to breed, they like to glue their eggs to whatever surface they happen to choose. The ones that we use here, you can kind of see it down here. We provide cork bark pieces right along the ground there so that they can lay their eggs underneath those and they're easier to retrieve. You can do it however you want. They'll lay their eggs wherever. They just won't lay them directly on the glass like you will see with day geckos. Like I said, they're very active. They are very, very similar to most monitor species. They're not related, but they look very similar. And that's why they've been sometimes been called the poor man's tree monitor. They usually eat two to three times a week. At least the adults do. The babies, when we first get them started for the first, maybe first six months or so, we feed them almost every day and they will eat. They eat a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. On that note, I brought in some roaches. I've got some quarter inch roaches here for the babies. This guy already knows what's up. Sort of dump them in there. They will rip and tear into those. We have actually seen, we have on occasion put some of larger crickets in there. Usually like the largest one we've done is about a half inch and that was a little too big. It just managed to get in with all the other ones that we've done. And that really wasn't a problem. A couple of them just ripped them in half. So they will eat and they will eat anything. Like I said, starting out, you're gonna want them on quarter inch, maybe eighth inch crickets and dubia roaches. They seem to prefer the dubias. You just sprinkle them on in there. They like crickets and dubias, like I said. They will also occasionally eat wax worms, although that should be more used as a treat. In terms of handling, you're definitely gonna want treats because they are very food oriented and food motivated. So, ones like these ones, when they're about this size, they're pretty chill. Like, if you work with them when they start out this size. So the thing to do is always get a baby, start with babies. Captive bred are always better than the wild caughts. I know the wild caughts are kind of big right now. Everybody's just, everybody's got them. 
because they're all importing. But here at Josh's Frogs, we like to captive breed our stuff. So we have the babies here. They're all captive bred, born and raised here. And if you work with them from this age, they're gonna be nice and tame. If you, work, if you don't work with them and you get wild caught individuals, you're gonna end up with something that's a little bit flighty, very flighty, and has a tendency to drop their tails. They, will, they can drop their tails and they will drop their tails. And if they're not dropping their tails, they're biting you a lot. Other than that, they're a very fun species. They're bright green, so they're beautiful to look at. And they're also very active, very inquisitive, and they're fun to interact with if you can work with them. Another wonderful species here at Josh's Frogs. I encourage you to give them a try. Thanks so much for watching this video. Here at Josh's Frogs, bringing nature to your doorstep is more than just our mission, it's our passion. We want you to have the most successful experience possible. So we're going to be here for you before, during, and after your purchase. Whether that's with our captive bred animals, plants, insects, or the wide variety of their care products on our website. You always have access to our dedicated customer service team, on-site nature experts, hundreds of free articles via our blog, and many more videos right here on our YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. We're always happy to help. Just shoot us an email or give us a call. You can find all of this information and more at joshesfrogs.com. Thanks again and see you next time.